What do you think to have your first experience working with Kubernetes? In this video, we are going to do together a very simple example of running a MongoDB server using this product for container orchestration. So, let's start. For running Kubernetes in our example, we are using here a Windows operational system and we are using Docker Desktop for accessing in the process. Docker Desktop is the same tool we use to handle the containers and images we have in our own computer, but it have here in the settings the possibility to enable Kubernetes. So just enable your Kubernetes and ask that to start, and then you are going to see that the, the result as output you will have in your command um, from your operational system, the common kube control, kube control available, okay? In case, then you enab enable your Kubernetes and type kube control in your console and it answer, then you have sure you have Kubernetes installed and then you are ready to start with the presented examples. Here is the overview about what are we going to do. First of all, we have to create the pods that are the set of containers that are going to be available to deliver the Mongo set. For this purpose, we need to have a deployment YAML file that will say we have um, a pod for Mongo, will be based in Mongo images, and then um, another configurations about this this pod here is just some extended configuration. Once it's defined, we defined and executed, we need to make that available in the network for Kubernetes. It means we need to create a service. And then once we have created a service with this set of definitions, we have then the um, pods listening to one specific port and then the Kubernetes can make the load balance. So independently of the container that it's going to listen, the IP address and the port will always be the same, but it will work inside the Kubernetes network. It's not be necessarily visible to our own computer, then we could access this MongoDB server from another external application, for instance, a MongoDB client. So that's the purpose in the next step of this video. We are going to do a port forwarding, make the, the service we created in Kubernetes listening to one specific port also in our local computer. Now let's finally execute the procedure. We have the files already defined. They are standard examples from Kubernetes. You can download that directly in the internet. So if you open your web browser, you type here the defined URL, you are going to see the EIML file we have just downloaded. Of course, you could download that to your own computer, customize that and make your own set of definition, but we could work with the exactly example Kubernetes had already delivered to us. So we could then take here our script and create then this deployment object that will be responsible for creating the, the, the pods, the replica sets and everything together. So we just execute that in our console and then now we are going to have here the deployment created with the, the MongoDB. You can take a look in what has happened, um, executing the kube control. Uh, most of Kubernetes um, commands are done from kube control um, statements. And then here we could use get and then see what has happened. Ask it for pods. So here we have seen the, the pod we have just created from MongoDB. We could ask to see the deploy object that also is very important for running Mongo, MongoDB services. Okay, now we have created, created the deployment. Next step 
you need to create the service. The service is the same thing, the, the file is available published, but you could download that, that and make customizations, but you could just execute that. It will make the port listening in the context of Kubernetes, but not yet in our local computer. So just execute the second command here in our computer, and then now we have this service, a service created with with some specific name for Mongo, we could track what has happened now, testing to see the service. Service on here. Yes, then you can see here, 18 seconds ago, we have created this Mongo service. Now everything is done, everything's okay. We have one service running in this port in our Kubernetes network. But now we need to make a forwarding to our external computer, our local computer. So we need to know what is the pod we have created. Here, the, the pod has this name, right? This identificator. And then we are going to run one specific command for this pod. So it's the last step of this video. We, we are going to execute the port forward, then setting specifically this name. So you, you cannot just copy this one. You need to see specifically the name was generated in our case and then make this port forward, and then you could choose your own port. We are going to change that here in this example. So now you can just return here to your, your prompt command, and then we need to copy the specific pod name was generated for our example. Okay, then we just return here and replace for this one, and then we can change this port to any other port, like 28020. Okay, and then it was done, and it already is working. So, how to test now? And now that we have our Mongo service in Kubernetes running and redirecting with one specific port in our local computer, the 28020, we could connect that using MongoDB client. So here we could just type the protocol we are going to use, MongoDB, and then our local computer, the local host, then the specific port we have defined. And now try to connect, and here we are inside the MongoDB server that is running on Kubernetes. So it's that, hope you have enjoyed the video, thank you for watching and see you next time.